gets off. So these are ground rods. They come in chuckles all this for boots. And I happen to get two tonight. So see how useful they are. Ooh. They'll be There'll be 312 point seven thousandths. 312 point seven thousandths. Awesome. And where's me metric stuff? So I can see what it is in metric. Can't find me metric. Oh, it's here. Metric. 7.86mm and we're doing that with a caliper not with a 7.86mm and that's going to zero yep so they're not anything really but uh, I think I'm going to cut them up into certain I'm going to use them for measuring V's and stuff like that you know I know, I know it's a known it's going to be a known width doesn't matter which way you put it in, so I'm going to cut a couple of those up to about two inches, 50 millimeters. Probably like a set of four of them, like gauge gauge pins for measuring in tight V's. You know, measuring in places like that. What have you? You know what I mean. So I've got them tonight. Oh, that's pretty cool. Now I'm going to set up the milling machine. Let's see how long it takes to set up. Which way should I go about this? Which way? Oh, I know what I've got. So, I put a milling mark in the side here. You can't see it's where my fingernail is. That tells where the centre line is of where the milling basically where the you know where the centre line of the lathe is so I will be wanting to clamp below the centre line so I can get the DTI out of the way for a short period of time and bring me part up this is me part it's already clamped I've already done a little bit of milling on it That should suffice now. So now I want to clamp that on there. Somewhere close to there. And the idea is I want the workpiece towards the left hand side as you're seeing it. You can see the sharpie mark here, so I bought the milling surface, the horizontal surface, up to that. If I put milling cutter in now, it will just take a full cut from on the side. So I want to bring it down. That's approximately level. You can see that's approximately level. And I think I'll bring it down about another 70 thou. Whatever that will be. Uh, I don't know what's happened here. Okay. Uh, I'm on. Just nip it at that. Now I can bring in the DTI gauge. Here it is. DTI gauge in shot. The first measurement I'm going to take is across the face. So I'll set it back up how it was. Oh, obviously, camera. So I don't have full travel on that anymore, but not to worry. So we start at minus seven. Oh, 
Oh dear, I've done that again. I might have to set up again. I doubt it, because... Yeah, I've got to set up again. Excellent. This is the hassle I'm going to have to go through every time I do this, because I forget which way this stuff needs to be. Here we go. Approximately zero. That's one tenth. That's three tenths of a millimetre. Am I bothered about three tenths of a millimetre? Sorry, three tenths, three hundredths of a millimetre, shall I say, three hundredths of a millimetre. Am I, that's less than a hundredth of a millimetre. There's flex in this, I've took it all out now, so that's zero. And that's minus two hundredths of a millimetre. Go back the other way. That's minus one hundredth of a millimetre. And that's nearly enough back to zero. That's again, that's up to the minus one hundredth. I don't need to bother, bother about that. That's that's my that's two hundredth of a millimetre maximum run out. We're just gonna tighten it up at that. Put the milling cutter in. So I'm just making sure that is way tight now. We'll measure it again one more time. Now it's really tight. And that ain't moving really, is it? Eh? That's perfect. Right, next, have I got it level? <laughs> yeah, okay. Have I got it level? Well, if you don't take the magnet off and you undo the screw, we might get somewhere. Be zero there. Minus what touch was in. So that's gone minus fifty. Three hundredths of a millimetre, so that's gone down. Obviously, this will be going up, that will be going down. So, as we look at it, the left side's lower than the right side by half a millimetre. And as for centre, we look to be around about mil below centre so I don't mind taking some more out of that and putting a slightly smaller cutter in than what I wanted so I am just undoing the G clamp which you can't see out of picture just slackening it off a little bit now I'm going to hit down here and hopefully take half a mil out so we'll wind back to that side All the way to that side, get onto that, back up to zero. Did we come to zero? No, obviously not, clearly. So we've got 40, so I'm going to take out 20 of that, so in with a copper mallet. Twenty-five. I took twenty-five out, I know I said I'm gonna take twenty, I took twenty-five out. So we'll take that as zero. Now we'll bring the zero around there, eh? That's close to zero. And bring it back across again. Down the ten. Obviously it pivots. Thirty. That's fifty again still, we're still at fifty. So 
So another 25 out of that. but not to worry. And that's minus about 10 now. It's 42. To 62. So I took some more out. from that, so I'll take one of those, that's the way that is bang on now, still slightly high up, let's take a bit more out, oh it's too much, <laughs> not moving at all that's perfect all right that's how much that setting up takes that takes a lot of setting up so Obviously, it doesn't matter what milling cutter you use, from the centre line, it will be cutting half of its distance. So if I lay this across the centre line, I can gauge approximately what I'm going to be taking on that. And that milling cutter will be taking almost nothing. I don't know what size it is. Something eight. Let me see that. It's right there. There's a little letter. There's a number eight there. It's been held in a chuck, so that's a bit hard to see. But that is not good. Then I've got this. This is massive. So if I hold that on the centre line. This will basically cut all of it. Talk about the centre line. That will be leaving about a millimetre at the bottom, so that's clearly too big. <laughs> These are this first cut is going to be a complete approximation. So I've got a centre line, and then a sharp mark on it. That looks about right. So I put a shelving mark on the end of that. Can you see that? And that's going to be the depth of cut. Let me see what that'll be. And that is just you know, eyeballing for a first cut. 6.8. Six point eight is the maximum I can take it down to. That is basically ten mil. Measure it again. Yeah, that's basically 10 mil. Worst case scenario is going to be four point four four. Best case scenario is going to be three point three five. Three point three five leaves seven. Four point four leaves six point six. So it should be bang on. Now I need a collet to hold this. 12.6 or 12 to 13 collet. 12 to 13 collet. What's that one there? Take that 
pull it out, put that back in the packet, mix them all up, flip this baby in, try not to drop it over the lathe, okay, bad things will happen, this one's tight, they're not all tight, oh get in, this is the best fitting one, this lot proper is hard to fit into the knot so the oh man still not got it in the wrist is still hurting so I can't put full pressure there we go got it no I didn't get it get in still not in get in there we go got ya Make sure there's no dirt inside there. You can see that, yeah. I'm giving it a good fingering in the bore. Make sure there's no nasty things inside the bore there. Screw the screw the knots. Tight. Give the knot a good wrench. Should be good as it is. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get a measurement on this of how deep I'm going. But I'm going to attempt to get a measurement on how deep I am going. It's going to be, obviously, 3.3 off by the looks of it, and I should be leaving approximately, This should do it perfectly. I should be getting 6.64 left. I can't be sure. Can get a bit of light down here maybe. This is the stop. I know I'm touching the... I'm touching the milling cutter now with the part. So that's up against the stop. I don't know it isn't. Let's pick it up so you can lock it. That's got a lock there. Pick it up against the stop there. And at the back of it, this is the micrometer adjustment for it. Let's bring the light back into where it needs to be. It's open enough. It's not much travel on this, but I'm sure there's two hundred thousands on it. I'll push it out to its full length. Bring it back round to zero. Bring the backlash out. Bring it round to zero. Bring it there. Put the stop up against it, tighten it up, and again we'll try it again. Lift it, sorry that's 25. Lift it. 75. 100. 225. 250. I've gone too far, haven't I? What did I say it was? 272, 250. 270. Ah, oh, just 275 will do, won't I? 275. So now I can. Although the part is touching the cutter now, I can move the part that way another 275 thousandths now. So that would be the gap in here, that's 275 thousandths now in there. And 
when I'm doing the milling with the carriage going that way, I'll obviously increment it bit by bit, locking it off every time and taking a cut, taking a cut, taking a cut until I've got all the way down until I hit the lock stop now. And then we'll have a land which should be approximately right, the right depth and the right width, approximately. <laughs> I don't know if that was too fast or too slow. I'll take a measurement on that and make sure we're not taking way too much off. So we'll come in and we'll take a measurement on that. And that'll be around about millimetres one. 6.3 it says. 6.2, no chance. Oh man, I'm taking too much off, ain't I? Yeah, I think we're taking too much off. It's taking four mil off of ten mil. Four mil off of ten mil. I'm taking too much off of a car like that, so all the fun. A day. Another dollar, and I'm lowering the milling operation by half a millimeter. So if it goes up, that needle goes clockwise, anti clockwise for down, and the same for this one. And we're looking for the needle to go the opposite way to where it's going, but to go to about there. And the same on this one, we're looking for the needle to go the opposite way, but right round to there. 50 hundredths of a millimetre. We could bring this one down a bit more, maybe. Right, they're both at 51 now. That is good enough, they're both down 51. Sweet. Now, for the next cut. Ready? I'm going to get some more light on the subject. More light on the subject. I think one's glaring. Which one is it that's glaring? This one here. We'll turn that one off. Is that the new one? No. That one there? Yep, turn that one off. That was glaring. I think we'll all agree it's best to make sure. So now I'm going to come in. That should be around about half a millimetre. It is, it looks about a millimetre, half a millimetre up, I don't know. It looks a millimetre to me, but there we go. So we're going to put some oil in the bearings, oil in the bearings for a start. Get a bit in there. Start it up, let it run for a couple of seconds.
to see what that is. We might as well put a mark on the ways or something. No, I'm going to come back to that with a detail gauge. I don't want to come back to exactly the same point. So I should do that with a DTI. I don't know how I'm going to do it yet, but somehow. Six point seven five maybe six point nine. It's hard to tell at this, but about six point seven ish, six point six, six point seven ish. And I'm aiming for about that, I think it is. Yeah, six point seven. Yeah, 6.7, I can get in most places. Right, pretty happy at that. Bring it back into my zero. At two. Which is about there. Yes it is. Make sure it looks right. Yep, that looks right. Bring it back across the other side. Yeah, that would be alright. Right, so we'll roll that back a little bit. Bring that back across the other side. We're clear. And, uh, yeah. Is that a good place? How much have I got? I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mil. What's seven mil in thousands? I need two hundred and seventy thousandths. Seven mil in thousands. Make sure of that. Six point six. Should just give me enough travel on the DTI gauge where I've got it. So I can come back into my stop every time. Now across that side, I can bring myself back into a zero and put on five tenths, let's see. Five hundredths of a millimeter. That's uh, a thousand, something like that. Let's see what happens. Run. <laughs>
continually cutting out and well can't sort the camera out at the same time as doing the filling when the machine's running I want it to run so I started off taking quarter uh, point, point 0.5 mil point zero, 0.05 mil cuts then I moved up to 0.15 cuts 0.2 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 1, then 2 mil cuts, and then I had whatever was left at the end. And the last cut, the last 2 mil cut was a little bit juddery, but there we go. I'll just deburn it a bit with a file, just get some of the swarf off of it. And that's what we got. Let's have a look. There's oil everywhere. Can't be doing with this oil everywhere. And I think that should be enough for this operation. Yeah, there's still a bit of a burr on the backside from the initial cut, but not to worry. I didn't slice my fingers. So this is the cut. This is what we're getting. Let's get some light on the subject. You can see that finish. Got a bit of gall in from recutting chips, I think. So I was doing so many passes, the last pass right in the, so I want to try and take this side off all in one pass. I'm going to see if it can take a, a big cut for this little machine and this little milling table, I'm going to take that whole and the cut to do that, I have to be on the other side, otherwise, I'm climb milling, it will go bad. So, I'll come across this side. I might slow the speed down for this one since I'm uh, running. running. So, I'll slow the speed down to around about wobble speed, get into that, put some pressure on it, like I said. Lock it up. Loads of oil. I'm trying to take that all in one. And that does look right, by the way. It's right on the line. Looks slightly over. Here we go. Wish me luck, because this is going to be the whole thing all in one. With no test. Straight in, in for the kill. Then I'm going to get a Chinese takeaway.
That's what you can do if you don't funny about. The tea knot. What I've done is I've stoned the surfaces. You can see that. So they're not perfect, but they are stoned. See the needle. So if we take the zero as four there. And that's two, two and a half thousandths from side to side. There's a few variations as you can see the needle and up and down, basically it's one thousandths down most of the time, then it comes up a little bit at the end. Sorry, it's down a little bit at that end. No, it's all this is going down, it's going down, down. So from about here to about there, it's almost the same and the end it goes up a little bit there so I could just stone that edge a little bit more to the other side and that was four so it goes from three the other side lower it goes higher by a blah blah to five so it's a little bit lower there, a little bit higher there. Tooth, tooth thou on that side. All the way across. I think. No, that's higher. Yeah, this is higher. This is higher by three thou. So this side here is higher by 3,000, I'm just going to get a bit more stone in. This was the side, just give it a bit more of a stone in. So the high spot now is... Go 
for the three. So this is ranging between three and five before bottom dead center. That's two thou. And this one is ranging between between four after bottom dead center to three and a half before top dead center. So I'm just going to stone this side here a little bit more heavy. Bring it back. Some more stoning. So, three before top dead centre, three before bottom dead centre, three and a half, sorry. To four and seven eighths four and seven eighths before top dead center eighth after bottom dead center so now the whole thing is within two thou less than two thou within parallel side to side and well I think that's going to be good enough so let's have a look see get that out of the way let's bring the compound in here's the compound T not in side to side and it doesn't rock anymore I don't know how far it is below but it's definitely below the surface I might just have to take some more off that top surface just to make certain because I don't think I don't think there's going to be enough of a clearance it's pretty much parallel all the way across the top now <laughs> oh no so I think what I've got to do now is just I think I'll just sand the top of the surface and take a couple of thou off of it with a coarse emery cloth and then smooth it out with some 320 and bring you back when that's done so I have been sanding for around about I don't know, 5 or 10 minutes just get a bit of the sanding dust off not been sanding in here, I've been sanding out in the garage And now, I'm going to measure up the DTI. I believe that's about two or three thou. And that will be perfect. Cool. Gonna blast all the grit out of it, I think. That will do. T nut done. So I just use brake cleaner like I normally do, and hopefully you can see the difference there now. Yeah, that's cool. That is cool. This is the Tool post hold down bolt that came with it. Oh man. 
Yeah, this could do with a few chips taken off it or burst taken off the end. I don't know what that is. Anyway. Make sure that goes in without a foul in. Yep, that certainly goes in without a foul in. So I'll just take that to the vice, put the soft jaws in and tighten it up. I don't know if this is the best engineering project I've done so far yet, but it's within two thou all round. And hopefully that will make the difference in comparison to the old one. Let's show the old one and the neat one side by side, eh? So excuse the welding, but there's the original T hold down. For a start, it wobbles, and yeah, so is this one. Why is that wobbling? Is it sticking out slightly at the bottom? I think it's just slightly sticking out at the bottom there now. The yeah, it is just slightly sticking out here. Well, it, it was flat until it was sticking out the bottom. Anyway, I would say this was made by somebody. If you can see the bow in that, it's definitely bowed in both directions. Now I welded, welded it up, and obviously, as you can see, ground it off at the end there. Someone's machined this area in. Might have done it on the way there, I don't know. But that was the original one. And it was pretty naff, but it, you know, it held in. And this is the far superior new one. So when that goes in, there's a two thousandth jiggle in that. It's hardly noticeable. When this one goes in, Yeah, it can jiggle all over the place. <laughs> Far superior, this new one. Yeah, it just, you can't really tell it's jiggling. It's, it's a, it might be this jiggling, it might be the, no, it the base jiggling. It should be flat, it is an engineered surface. So there is a slight jiggle in it, it's ever so slight. But enough of that. Now I can mount the new tool post on the compound. The reason why it's not on the lathe right now is because the mirror attachment is still on there. But there we go. The new tool post holder is on. This nut is horrible, I might have to make a new nut. The one that covers these threads up, stop chips getting these threads. So I need some hardened steel or some alloyed steel to make a new nut with, which is that high, and maybe put another one of these handles on it. Ta-da! Fingers crossed. That will be good. It doesn't go like that, it goes, I should imagine, like that. Uh, or is it all locked up? I don't know. Um, what's happened here? I don't know. Whatever. There we go. What that's for, I don't know. What is that for? It doesn't go all the way through. Is it for putting a... It's just putting an attachment on, let's say. A... Just bring it up to there. Good. Can we put a DTI in that or something like that? A peg of some sort? I'm going to put a... I'm going to make a peg for that, I think. 
with the same diameter as one of these shafts. So I can put one of these thimble things on it and uh, have a shaft out here for some reason. Who knows why? But that's how that good one. I bet it's a stupid old thread. You know, national course or something like that. Why can't we just all go metric? It's miles easier if everything's metric. Going between thousandths here, hundredths there, and point to the mill there, and five fifty thousandths there, and oh my good night. Working on these old lathes when you've got silly old Whitworth threads here. Anyway, that's that done. It is done. Done. Done, done. Spin it round. Mounted. It will be on the lathe before long. Just got some milling operations to do first, then it's going on. And I will set up all the tool holders. All of the tool holders. Oh, which reminds me, I need to find out what size parting blades and I can do proper parting which takes a couple of minutes instead of parting which takes 45 minutes to do total bars. Okay. <laughs> 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 <laughs>